What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and when the news first broke about the Savannah Soto case, I immediately thought that this had to be something personal. And when more details came out about how Savannah and Matthew were killed, about how quickly their bodies and their vehicle was disposed of, I also thought this has to be personal. But now that more information has trickled out, I'm starting to change my mind just a tad bit. Because don't get me wrong, I look at how quickly this happened and it blows my mind. Like, like I don't understand how all of this could have happened within nine minutes. Without any prior planning, without any prior conversations between Christopher and Ramon and Big Murder. Without any conversations between the three, how could this have happened so quickly? You know, car pulls up and before you know it, they're dead and their bodies are already dropped off. It seems as if there has to be some planning there. And to kill Matthew, to not only kill Matthew, but to kill Savannah and an unborn child, a pregnant 18-year-old girl, it just makes you feel like there has to be some personal hatred there. But like I said, as the details start to trickle out, I really question if this was personal at all. I'm starting to change my mind just a tad bit because of how sloppy this crime was. I mean, you dropped off Savannah, Matthew, and the car right around the corner from your house. I would think that if this was planned out, that maybe you would have had a better plan on where to take the bodies, where to dump the car. But no, right around the corner from their house. And you know, if this was personal, it had to be planned, right? But there were so many mistakes made that it's hard to look at this like, oh, this was planned, this was personal now. I, I, unless we're just dealing with the stupidest people alive, which is very possible. But the fact that they ditched the car right around the corner from the house... The cell phone, Savannah's cell phone, right there in the car. You didn't even dispose of the cell phone. So anyone could track this vehicle anywhere. No one ran. No one tried to get away. Christopher didn't try to make it to Mexico. Ramon didn't try to make it to Canada. Big Murda didn't try to make it to the Ozzy Osbourne concert. Everyone just sat there in the home, right around the corner from Savannah and Matthew's bodies, right around the corner from their car, as if nothing happened. And these people had time to make a move, but no moves were made. But, but, but it, it gets even crazier because the murder weapon, you, that, that, that had to be the easiest thing to dispose of. It's not a body. It's not a car. You could literally walk down the street and throw it in a sewer. Go throw it in the freaking ocean. Go throw it in a trash compactor. But no, the murder weapon, we're going to keep that too. We're going to keep it right here in our bedroom. And let's not talk about the truck. Even though Christopher ditches the bodies and, and the car right by the house, these dumbasses decide to take the truck to the location as well. And that's what gets them caught because they drive to the, this location in the truck. They're on camera in the truck. And instead of ditching the truck, maybe driving the truck somewhere else, they drive it right back home. I know kids are lazy these days. I may be a big guy, but when I was young, I walked everywhere. I'd be all over the city walking everywhere. Christopher couldn't walk a couple of streets down back home after ditching this car? No. We're going to drive our family vehicle to the location where you ditched the bodies, and then we're going to drive it right back home. And we're going to keep the murder weapon. We're going to keep Savannah's phone 
in the car with them. It, as personal and as planned out as this looks, in my opinion, it's just too sloppy for there to have been a plan. Now, I do think there's a possibility that there were discussions had. Maybe there was a hatched plan, but they didn't really iron it out. And maybe this family is just doped up. I, I think it's way more than trees. I think it's way more than weed. I think they're on something else. Maybe this family is so doped up and they're so just out of it that, that they're not thinking straight and they're not making the best decisions. I don't know. But this is the sloppiest job I think I've ever seen. And if this was planned, and if this was personal, and this is the best you could do, dropping the bodies off down the street, keeping the murder weapon, keeping the phone, if that's the best you can do, then I don't know what to tell you. So even though this case, it, it's really simple, it's at the same time confusing. Because you look at the manner of the crimes and it feels personal. You look at how quickly this happened and it seems planned. But then you look at how easily they got caught. You look, you look at the fact that they put zero effort in really trying to get away with this. And that's when you start questioning, wait, maybe this wasn't personal. Maybe this wasn't planned. Because anyone with a personal vendetta would have had time to think out the situation a little bit more. Anyone with a plan would have had a plan. And this there's obvious that there was no plan here. Even if they came up with a plan, that plan was ditched. Maybe they were on too many Xannies. Maybe they popped one too many Xanax that they forgot the plan. Maybe they fell asleep and forgot what even day it was. Maybe they forgot they even did this. Things like that happen. Gotta watch out. A lot of the prescription stuff, man, that's some of the most dangerous stuff. People wake up in jail all the time not knowing anything, not knowing what happened, and not realizing that there's a whole few days missing from their lives when they were high on Xannies doing God knows what. So I really do feel like there's substances involved in this situation. And as these details start to come out, I'm really changing my mind about everything. As crazy as it sounds... Maybe Christopher did all of this, this family did all of this in nine minutes with no plan, without any prior conversations. It just happened spur of the moment. And that's why everything was done as sloppily as it was done. I mean, the wounds like to the back of the head, that feels more personal and more planned to me. That doesn't feel as spontaneous. That lets you know that it, at the very least, regardless of what discussions were had beforehand, I do believe that Christopher went into the vehicle or Christopher linked up with Matthew with the intention of killing Matthew. But I don't know if it was something personal or if he just wanted the money. I don't know what was going through his head. I think maybe he was high and messed up on some stuff. But as much thought as I can put into it and we could brainstorm and we could talk about it all day, looking at how easily these individuals got caught and looking at all of the mistakes they made. Hell, you're on your own security camera leaving and returning home. It just makes you think that maybe this just wasn't what we thought it was. Maybe this wasn't personal. Maybe this wasn't planned. Maybe this was just some stupid stuff that happened and stupid stuff happens all the time. I will say one thing though. For some reason, I can't quite put my finger on it. It's just the feeling that I have inside. I feel like Ramon, the father, has less to do with this than anyone. I fully believe that Christopher killed them. But if anyone had anything more to do with this, I think it's more so big murder. I don't think it's Ramon. I mean, of course, Ramon was there. He helped. He drove the truck over there. But if there was some prior knowledge and conversations about this, I think it's more so on the mom. It's more so on Big Murder. I know everyone's looking at Ramon and everyone's obviously looking at Christopher. But I'm looking at her. I, I got a weird feeling about her. Maybe it's the way she looks. I don't know. Maybe it was the Ozzy Osbourne shirt. I don't know. 
But then again, you know, maybe it's the fact that the murder weapon belonged to her and she so-called would have the room door locked. So if there was anyone that was more involved in this out of the two parents, I think it's the mom. I honestly feel like Ramon is probably the third wheel. Ramon's probably the one that didn't really want to deal with this and be involved in this. But Ramon's going to try to protect his son. Ramon's going to try to protect his woman. That's just my opinion, though. Maybe we'll find out new information and maybe I'm wrong. Because like I said, from the beginning, I thought this was planned. I thought this was personal and it very well still could be. But looking at some of these new details, it's just like, if y'all planned this and this is the best y'all can do, then I have no hope, not only for humanity, but I don't even have hope for criminals anymore. I know that the population of Earth has gotten stupider and stupider over the past couple of years, but even our criminals are getting dumber. You know what I mean? But let me know your thoughts about all of this down in the comments below. What do you think? Personal? Planned? Spur of the moment? I, I want to know from you all, have any of these new details changed your outlook on this case? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, if you're feeling generous, you could donate to the channel via Super Thanks, or you could donate directly via Cash App, or you can help the channel for free by liking, sharing, subscribing. But with that being said, I'll talk to you all soon in the next video.